excuse me, sorry about that. Good afternoon. I trust this video finds you safe and well. I was almost organised. So, hello and welcome from Marie at Messiem Creations. I hope this video finds you safe and well. If you join me live, please do say hi. If you're watching on catch up or on YouTube then please do say hi so I know you've caught it. So today's video is recreating a card that was on a recent blog of mine. So my blog is at www.messiemcreations.com Com and someone saw my party puffin card um, and asked how to create it so I thought I would jump on and do a Facebook live to show you and then share that video on my blog so that people can see how I did it so we are using party puffins which have has these three fantastic puffins a cake some candles and I've also mounted up to the happy birthday but you've also got to someone who makes others happy you're the best from all of us and make a wish so that's the set I am using I am colouring in using stamping right markers so I am going to be inking my puffins in stays on ink so that I don't get any merging I have pre-cut a card base in um, pumpkin pie, I forgot then, um, a first layer in Daffodil Delight and then the fabulous Magenta Madness, then an additional layer of the pumpkin pie and then I have a piece of shimmery white which is where my part is going to happen. So, in order to create this card, which I don't have the original because I sent it as a birthday card, but this is um, from um, my Pinterest. So, in essence, we have a number of puffins. How many puffins you do is entirely up to you. But in order to create the party, you do need to do um, a masking technique. So, uh, any old post-it note... Um, ensuring that the sticky piece is what is underneath. I don't know if you just off camera. Look, I've I've done a few. So there's my party puffins templates. So where the puffin is black, I do want to cut inside the line so that we don't get too much of a gap between each puffin. So just sort of roughly cut around the lines. I'm not particularly worried about their feet either. It's only the ones at the bottom that we see their feet. So sorry for animal cruelty. Um, bird cruelty. Are they a bird or an animal? Who knows? Um, a bird, I suspect. They lay eggs. So yes, cut the feet off. No puffins harmed in the process of making this card. So that then is is my mask so I've made a number of those and also stamped um, a little cake so, oh hi Tracy hope you're well so um, in essence I need to get a stamp in so stays on is an alcohol ink um, let's start with, so all we need to make sure is that we have inked up well because we want the black to be really clear. So I am going to put them all sorts of different angles. Now the these first two sort of want to be around 
where the cake is going to go. So I'm going to put those two on first. So that's going to go there and there. And then eventually my cake is going to sort of cover that front piece. So before I stamp any other puffins, I basically overlay that mask onto my little puffin. So most importantly, kind of masking out the white bits. I'm going to use the little one. So just pop his little head up there. So again, another mask goes on. Then we can have another puffin. Now, what you'd obviously, you'd, what you don't want to see on the others is their feet. But by stamping with those masks in place, and you can see why I needed to cut fairly close because you do end up with that white mark if you aren't so. That's one. We'll have. Well, actually, I'm going to put another one of these little baby ones. You do need to re ink every time because we want the black to be really black. So this one's going to come there. So this is why I have made several masks. Because, in essence, I am going to, for safety reasons, I'm going to cover this one up as well because the effect is completely lost if you overlay the puffins. And this one doesn't have to be at an exact angle if you don't want him to be. So I'm going to just make sure that his feet are over my masks. Again, a little overlay. I think I'll do another one of those. So this works with any stamp set where you want to create that layering effect. So what I might do is do some more out to the side. So I literally, oh, bang in the head. I'm going to do one parting off this side with his little hat. So again, just making sure that anything is over those masks. I'm not going to do anything else on that side. We're going to do this puffin at that sort of angle. So just make sure the mask is down, that his feet won't be seen. I think that might just that might just do it because Marie's run out of masks. But fundamentally, if I wanted to carry on, I could take this mask from the bottom and overlay that onto that that one if I wanted to do another one. But I think I'm going to leave area for a sentiment. So actually, what I will do before I do any colouring while I've got all my masks in place so I'm finished with the stays on I'm going to do some magenta madness candles so again because I've got the masks in place I can ink up my candles and sort of have them 
wherever I want to put them. So then they just dance around. Might as well put my happy birthday on while I'm here. And then we can unmask and hopefully Oh actually what I might do I did do a little spotty background which is quite nice and we have a lovely set of spots in gorgeous leaves so I like a little splodge so this is a fantastic little set we've got this little splodge this smaller one so I'm going to do some yellow daffodil delight splodges so again I'm going to do that with the masks in place you could do it with um, splatter effect you could Splopping a few, splopping, splopping a word, it is now, splopping a few around. Don't want to get them over his now my cake is, we'll fill that area, so we'll just splop a few there, splop a few there. And stop with the splopping of splots. So we've got a bit of daffodil delight there. Oh, we're getting it all over ourselves. So then I can remove all my masks. And potentially you can just pop those straight back into your party puffins box. So that you've got masks for next time you want to create the card. At some point... The masks do really get so messy that you can't. Um, when you do use stays on clean uh, ink, you do need stays on cleaner. So it will not come off with water because it's alcohol based. So what I am going to quickly do is cut my little cake out. There's just a quick fussy cut around I'm almost getting expert with fussy cutting now it's not quite such a laborious process is it used to be keep the scissors close in move the paper around I am not going to suggest you cut each individual candle. If you are feeling so inclined, if you created the card, you could, of course, cut round every candle for maximum effect. Unless I'm feeling... Maybe we will. Should we cut round every candle? Could be a little... A little crazy. I might go down into the flame, but not so much the candle itself. Let's do it that way. There you go. So then in my Stamping Right markers, now I find it easier to use the bullet end. I do like the feet in the uh, pumpkin pie. Which I might just try it. Yeah, we can. 
feet because they're slightly bigger is actually slightly easier in the brush end. More chance of going over the edges like that. But definitely on the beak, use the. So this is why I use the stays on ink. Let's just see, will we see his feet? Yes. Because the Stamping Right markers are water based, using the stays on ink means that I don't get any bleeding of the inks. So the same colour pens as my ink pads which is one of the things I love about stamping up is it's so easy to get that coordination because all the colours come in the cardstock, the ink and pens, whether you want stamping right markers or alcohol blends or both of course. Never feel you have to limit yourself by not using uh, every possible combination, ribbon, you name it we've got it. I'm going to do a little flame, a little bit of the pumpkin pie in the centre of that flame. Uh, what colour should do the maybe one layer of icing can be is that a bit a bit of a lurid colour for icing so again once I've done that outline I'm actually going to ink that in with the fatter end it's just easier but use whichever end you find the easier to use so then I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight and add a bit of that yellow to my Puffin's beak. I've got the hat still to do. Can't concentrate on colouring and chat away. I don't even know how August came round. When I saw the pre release of the mini catalogue, it seemed like forever before it was going to come out, and now it's here already. So we've got our nice black and white. Puffins with their orange and yellow beaks. Let's have some yellow added to those candles for the flames. Let's have some icing. Maybe we'll leave the bottom layer as white and we'll use our black stamping right marker to colour the plate just literally so that I'm not bringing in any other colour but you could choose to do that completely differently and that is the joy of crafting and personal choice so I'm just going to make my candles pink I think pink might be a little OTT for the bottom layer of the cake. But why shouldn't we have pink? No reason really, should we? So I'm just going to colour those candles in pink as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is how you create this sort of design of card. I'm going to have a pink hat on this one. 
So the key thing is just being prepared with those masks to layer those masks up. This one can have a pink dot there, pink bobber on top, and this one can have all pink dots, methinks. And we'll have <coughs> Daffodil Delight as a background for that hat and so a couple of yellow dot on a yellow bubble on that one. We'll have oh, pumpkin pie bubble on that one. And that is how our puffins party. Thinking around and then the cake I'm going to put on a dimensional just to give it a bit of well actually that's a lie i'm not going to use a dimensional i'm going to use our foam sheets which i just find brilliant i find they're slightly thicker but also instead of putting multiple dimensionals on i can just put one piece and that can sit just there and then oh i may not be able to do it now i was going to corner cut I forgot to, i can cut definitely cut that top corner just to round a corner off just because i may not be able to i like to do opposites so i do all of them or opposites and i can just get that in without ruining my cake and then it's just a case of layering it up oh pre-used pre card pre-loved that's why craft card has two sides waste not want not and all that So just layering each one up. So my card base is the ten, standard 10.5 by 14.85 centimetres. And then for each layer, I've cut a half centimetre off each time so that you just see that little flash of colour to lift the card. This will definitely be a large stamp. So if you don't want the large stamp, then don't pop the extra oh that's done it again do you have to be careful with stamp and seal plus it's not really what i should be using on a card but i am but that's why it makes that little mess but that's fine nobody is gonna know just our secret shall i use stamp and seal instead Tape around, just make sure we are taped. Oh, this one's not playing ball either. Oh dear, no, that one's definitely not playing ball. Now, what I'm going to do, if in doubt, wet glue, just a little blob of it along that edge will just correct that and we will never know just don't tell anyone so placing that in the center there and there you go party puffins 
So hopefully you've enjoyed that and um, that helps everybody know how I created that card. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.